Oh, hi there. Hi. Welcome to the NoodleCast. I'm Jared. And with me is Brian and Jason. Brian oh. always loves how I how I start my uh show here. He he always wants he's waiting to hear how I'm gonna say what I say and yeah. what voice I'm gonna use, how loud am I gonna be? I I'm am, trying to be calm for him right now. I I'm turned your volume calm. down fifteen percent, by the way, while we were in like the prelude to oh. the show. Oh, because nice. you just sounded a little loud to my yeah. ears. So if I need yeah. to turn them down any more, chat, you let me know. Like yeah. all the way, if like if need all be. the way, just shut Jared down. Um, so we've got a few news items today. Not a huge amount. A couple things we're just gonna our new apparently our new section is rapid fire news. That's pew pew pew. Uh, we're just coming at you. Oh, right. oh is that what we're calling it? Rapid fire news. Oh, random news. Either it, way, it I'm was, okay with uh, random news. Let's do random news. Random news. Okay. Um, <laughs> first off, we had some new castings. Um, where'd it go? There it is. So the Flash movie, we talked about the Flash movie previously. It was on, it was off, it was on, it was off. They're getting new Flash, same Flash, new Flash, same Flash. Huh. They stayed with the same Flash. Um, it is one Flash. Um, it is our our buddy Ezra Miller is staying with Flash, but in his movie they are casting a Supergirl, which okay. is interesting. I didn't know they were going to go that route. Um, they have cast Supergirl, um, and the actress is Sasha uh, Kali. Uh, at least I assume that's how you pronounce her last name. I would say Kaye Spanish, but I don't I don't know. Anyway, Sasha Kali. Um, Young and the Restless. She's a soap opera actress. Um, that's where we get her from. Um, Jason, you know nothing about, about her? her. You know, I honestly, Young and the Restless wasn't my uh, okay. not your jam. I was the Days of Our Lives person, mm, which yeah. I blame my brother for. Um, mm. His girlfriend and him when college would watch it, and I somehow got sucked into watching it. That's weird. And they started anyway. working, and that ended. So, so she is coming on now. One interesting fact that I that uh, as I was reading the article in regards to it was. Um, they said that of all the, the they had to they auditioned like 600 people is something that I saw. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what I saw. And what they were indicating was that they had to have good chemistry on screen with Ezra Miller. So that seems to indicate that it's not a small role. Like there's going to be some serious interaction between Flash and Supergirl. So that's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting to me. Um, and people, I, and, you know, how I know how much Brian loves rumors and things that are unverified. Uh, but, you know, the question becomes is, is she replacing S S Superman in, in, the, in the DCEU universe, right? That'd be cool. So, like, no more Cavill? Correct. Mm. Correct. So, and that, again, speculation and just people talking and doing their thing. Um, so anyway, so she's been cast. Uh, I don't know anything about her. I can give you zero opinion of whether this is a good casting or not. Um, I have zero problem with her. Um, so I'm going to go with it was a good casting just because I don't I don't know any better. Yeah, I don't know any better. I, I like guess people that aren't like super, super known because I think it gives them a chance to like hopefully stand on their own like acting ability, hopefully. <laughs> um, I. Yeah personally think it's cool that they it, they went outside the norm i guess of what you expect mm -hmm. for a supergirl to look like and i think that's cool mm -hmm. um yeah. also like i'm i don't know if i'm surprised the flash movie is still happening or or what but just because of i don't know if you guys remember like months ago there was a like a fan recorded video of ezra miller choking a, a yes. fan and like nothing has come out of about yes. that like since then i do remember that. so i thought for sure like there'd be some sort of comeuppance Fallout. there but yeah like yeah so far TV nothing. so at this know. point in time it is still expected to be released uh november 4th 2022 yeah. and i think the article that we linked here says that they've started filming already so yeah um yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's on and i think this is cool um i don't buy the replacing superman aspect of it i don't know if um, i do either but it's interesting thought yeah. Yeah, who knows? Um, so yeah, so there we go. Supergirl, uh, Sasha Kaye, Kale, Kali, whatever, uh, huh. something. Anyway, That's not nice. What? 
What's on that? Yeah, whatever. It's it's yeah, whatever. <laughs> I wasn't meaning whatever to her name, more of a never mind. It doesn't matter. I suck. Uh so PR next we'll clean it up. Yeah. Next. Edit it. Um we had some news come out today. Uh Brian, what Marvel information do we have today? Oh man. Um we have a Spider-Man movie title, Spider-Man 3, formerly known as Spider-Man 3, um, has officially been titled. And this is after somewhat of a build-up the past couple days where uh, the various main actors were posting to their Instagram and Twitter and whatever um, mocked up logos with titles under them. And I think one of them was like Home Slice and one of them was Home Wrecker and something like that. Like titles that... I think um, what's his face nope, Spider Man like Tom Tom Holland posted one at first and everyone jumped on it like new title confirmed, <laughs> um, and then some another actor posted it and it was completely different and they're like wait maybe not but today, um, with the, on their Twitter the uh, official Marvel or Spider Man Twitter account they posted a, a short video of the actors walking through like a you know production area or whatever talking about how Tom how they gave them all the fake titles because Tom has been known to uh, spoil things <laughs> <laughs> in, in public leak things. Um, so the new title uh, official title confirmed is Spider-Man no way home commence uh, speculation, speculation on multiverse, that multiverse and, right? yeah, Somebody, everything that we've been hearing he about that. Up? So who's he going to get replaced with? What do you guys think? You like the title? I mean, it. All three have had. It's like the home trilogy home. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, all three have had that in there. So I, I, I dig it. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm down I'm for too. it. Yeah, I like what it opens up the the potential ideas that that could mean. You know, no way home. Yeah. You know, he could be going somewhere, a different world that's very different than the squeaky queen, queen one we we know, as well as from the last movie. The the kind of cliffhanger was, you know he's not or rather everyone's been knows outed he he's been revealed yeah. he's been outed so maybe that's where the no way home angle comes from like you know there's no going back kind of deal like now they know he's there it's probably multiverse <laughs> the, but you know what i mean like there's yeah. you know there's a lot of play so it's exciting yeah it's yeah good. i'm good with it um i i like the fact that they've had themes throughout the three movies that they've kind of done this home mm -hmm. theme um did you guys watch the video did you see that they had like a whiteboard with a whole bunch of like titles that yeah. they crossed out like they were thinking about yeah and, but um one of them yeah. I don't, how however teasy this is and i don't know like if they put things obviously they put things on the whiteboard intentionally so people would go crazy about it but one of the crossed out titles was home worlds like s plural um so people are all yeah. jumping over that about you know multiverse stuff Pick like that apart. so yeah be interesting yeah. to see uh when does that come out i can't remember when that comes out christmas that's uh, right of uh, this year okay yeah. yeah 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 christmas is here and they are saying it's only going to be in movie theaters i would and hope by then available. i would hope Which by I think then it's probably pretty safe by then yeah that fingers some crossed. people will be willing to to venture you know yeah yeah, yeah fingers crossed on that one but uh, yeah, so Spider Man. So we have a title. We have a title, and hopefully we have a trailer or at least a teaser soon. Um, that'd be nice to have, but we'll see. Probably, Probably not summertime, till late spring, summer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Maybe with okay. another another some of the other Marvel properties that are coming. Black out. Widow yeah. ever comes out. <laughs> you know, well, and they have that was actually one thing. Since we're kind of talking about it, Disney and Marvel um, did announce multiple other things. Uh, they gave a date for um bad batch star wars bad batch cartoon when that's coming out um that's coming out this may um and then um the loki tv series comes out in april so you've got um or maybe that's beginning of may as well it's the other way around bad batch is march um and loki is in may so there's so, some sort of statistic where there's like only like four weeks this year where there isn't like a new Marvel thing coming out between all the because series. Because of how they spaced like it, yeah. The, the stacked series Probably. and then theatrical releases. So I wouldn't be they, surprised. They gave if... their four release dates for the different four movies they have coming out. Um, 
this L- year. So Loki got... in June, according to chat. June. Maybe I didn't June read then. that announcement. Yeah, it very yeah. well may be June. And I wouldn't um, be surprised if they tease, like, uh, Marvel does a really good job of teasing their upcoming stuff in the stuff that is, like, just finishing up or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they tease some of that stuff before then. And then you've got, uh, you've got Black Widow. You've got the Eternals, you've got... Um, I keep forgetting about that that's coming. And I'm... Sun, uh, Sun Chi. Oh, um, I want to see something uh, from all of those things. Just give me a tease. When is Moon Knight? Uh, what's that? Moon, Moon Knight's 2022, Knight? I think. 2022, that's but what out. they they did say that She-Hawk is going to start filming soon, and shortly thereafter, Moon Hawk was going to... Or, yeah, would start... Um, Moon Knight would start filming. Yeah. Cool. Oh. And uh, and then the last movie being uh, Spider Man. So those are the four movies coming out this year, still for Marvel. Okay. Anyway, uh, speaking about movies and new movies, so HBO and Warner Brothers. Well, Warner Brothers is HBO. Or HBO is Warner Brothers. Um, they determined that they were going to release their movies simultaneously in theaters and um, on HBO Max. And um, so the news just came out today from Paramount Plus. So CBS, the the new or the app CBS um, All Access is becoming Paramount Plus. OK. They are going to release Paramount movies five weeks after their theater release on to sure Paramount Plus. Five weeks, right. Some will be potentially. Uh, I heard five weeks. I didn't catch that it would potentially be longer than that. Um, but that would make sense that they may do some different than others. A couple of the ones that they mentioned were um, A Quiet Place 2. Um, mm-hmm. They mentioned Mission Impossible 7. And they mentioned um, Top Gun were the three that I, I saw mentioned in different articles um, that were going to be coming out. So this is kind of a big deal. You know, they're they're going to be in theater get a little release in theater and then come out onto the, onto the streaming app. Um, man, it, it's interesting to see how, how these theaters and everything are going. And, and I know we've, we've beat this to a dead horse, the, the concept of the theaters and whatnot, but this is just another step in the direction of changing the game, changing the world of, of movies. Um, I, I don't yeah. think we're going to see theaters going away by any means, but it's definitely changing the game. Uh, on uh, it. This is le- certainly less drastic than the HBO oh, stuff. Yeah. I mean, Agreed. this at least throws theaters a bone and says, hey, you can have it like exclusively Some for a theory, while. Yeah. And then uh, leaving the door open, obviously, as Jason was saying, too, if you have a moneymaker movie that's making money week after week, then you don't necessarily have to, to put it on the it wouldn't be in their best interest really to put it on their, their service, you know, yeah. right away if they can actually make the money back in the theater. And I think that leaves it open too for the improving like situation with COVID cases and vaccine distributions General and stuff like that. Like world feelings. Yeah. Like if that starts, tra- keep continues to trend in the, in the direction that it's going, potentially you have more people feeling confident about going back to the movies and stuff yeah. like that. And that leaves that window open too. not just like a HBO thing. We're like, yep, everything this year, we're just going to stick right on the old service. And yeah, I yeah. think HBO's main thing was to try and attract, you know, get an influx That's of true. people. To, to that get was more app. about the yeah. app than it was about their theatrical now, money. Very maker. Possibly. That, to a yeah. degree may also be something that's trying to do with Paramount, because as we have talked before, the CBS app is pretty garbage. The one that is being replaced by this new Paramount Plus, um, you know, certain platforms, it just didn't work right. You know, it, it's like unless you're looking on like a PC, like you know, some of the other like Roku versions or whatever, they're, they're not quite um, good. So I have it on Apple TV and it works fine for me. I don't, I don't remember. And that's, and that's the thing, TV. like certain platforms, it works better than others. Um, yeah. The PlayStation app, like I was wondering what those faces were for that you were making. So yeah. like, yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's interesting too, is not only for, so Paramount plus you're, they're adding, I want to say seven, 
different channels into it eight different channels yeah, it's a collective of i mean you've got cbs things. you've got um yeah uh cartoon network um there were several of like them. nickelodeon nickelodeon um, but yeah, so like you you thing. struggling to like name those things brought me I, I was reading an article or a post or something somewhere about how like it's a curious thing that they decided to name it Paramount Plus, even though like it logically because that's the studio is Paramount. But sure. like, how many people know name recognition? Know all of the things under that, and what would be included? Like when you think Disney Plus, you immediately know everything, like just it's from true. brand recognition. It's true. So Paramount yeah. doesn't really have that recognition right now. So it'd be interesting to see, um, you know, what that does to their subscriptions that they that they get. Yeah, it's it's CBS. BET, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, MTV, and the Smithsonian Channel. Which <laughs> kind of speaks to how why much are they charging it, for it? You know, yeah, five bucks. I mean, Nickelodeon as of know, right now it's five bucks. Comedy Central, ha- I feel like it had some good stuff. You know, when I used to watch <laughs> it when like John Stewart was doing the Daily Show. Yeah. I don't know. You know, but you're know. also getting you're also getting the the sports channels too with it. Um, so like CBS sports, CBS sports and all that stuff, um, uh, come with it as well. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's five bucks. It's not a huge, I mean, it's not a huge investment. Um, you're getting a little bit to it. And quite frankly, I like the stuff that CBS plus has, um, by itself. I mean, I mean we've got a lot of good two stuff brand new Star, Star Wars stuff, uh, or right? Star Trek TV shows on it. I, I, I do it all the time. Stop it. Don't <laughs> act like it's a big deal. Uh, between oh, discovery, oh, yeah. it's not a big deal at all. <laughs> between discovery and Picard, um, and then you've got other stuff. Uh, they did a um, the stand, um, Stephen King's a yeah. stand as a mini series, and I, I've heard good things about it. So I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard, heard good mixed. things. So, so anyway, um, it's it's definitely going to be adding to the fact that it puts these movies on there w- roughly five weeks after. Um, I think that's going to be beneficial for it as well. But, yeah, definitely. Uh, so there's that Paramount Plus. That's exciting. That's exciting. Um, on the topic of movie theaters and everything like that, uh, Jason, tell us about your favorite topic ever. Well, we have what has clearly historically been one of my favorite topics to talk about. And this will possibly be one of the last times we talk about is uh movie pass the service we all knew and loved uh like two years ago when it was awesome and a thing uh and they're doing a docuseries on the colossal failure of movie pass and how that came to be um yeah really interesting um i'm really looking forward to to seeing it um the the initial read i i took of it is the you know the kind of founder um talks kind of about how the investors kind of really pushed its early demise by, you know, trying to keep the cost to the customer low, uh, even knowing that it was detrimental to the the longevity of the service. Like they, they had like a number in mind of like, if we keep it at this price per month, it's sustainable for a long time. And, you know, whatever their plans were, you know, could, could be achieved, but the people at the top wanted, they wanted the subscriber numbers. They, they felt that, hey, we get millions of people, you know, then, you know, that gives us, you know, power. Um, clearly that did not work. It just bankrupted them. Movies um, called theaters uh, called the know. bluff <laughs> and then started yeah, yeah. making up like, their we'll own. Take your money. Oh, I like <laughs> the not, subscription model we're not idea. We're changing Let's... our prices. So, <laughs> yeah. OK. And, yeah. uh, you know, then, you know, we, we all saw it. You know, we we were users of the service. And, you were you know, the longest holdout. I, yeah. And I got as much value out of it as I could until it got yeah. to the point where there's literally like no movies could be seen. Blacking out times. You know, like yeah. you'd you could only see the you could only see the Gotti, the John Travolta Gotti movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's I guess mean, the that's, only one. That's what it was. They'd give you like <laughs> one movie, and you know, like all right, whatever, you know, that's fine. But then they were like one movie at this specific showing. And then you get there at that time and it's no longer available. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, well, we're done with this experiment. For the three weeks that I could use it or whatever, as it was intended to be used, it was yeah. pretty cool. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a cool moment in time. And there are, you know, some people we know that were on the ball with that like a year prior to 
when we were even involved with it and they had like the the go any day you know one movie a day yeah all you can eat plan for like a year which <laughs> i mean like that's a pretty good value but it's it's gone because obviously it's a terrible business <laughs> Yeah, so, I uh, Beast movie pass. I am very curious about this series. Like, I, I plan on watching it just because I, I want to know. You want to know, know, right? Did it I say know where this is going to be? What this is going to be uh, on? It's by Mark Wahlberg's production. Is it really? That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't catch that either. I don't know if it's an HBO deal. Ba, 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 ba. It doesn't say yet. Uh, maybe it doesn't have a no. place. Uh, who's who's putting it up? I don't know. Yeah. Huh. TBD, but they're putting it together. Yeah, but I, I will be interested so. to uh, to watch it for sure. For sure. Um, so, yeah, docuseries on MoviePass. So uh, you may hear us talk about it one more time when uh, Jason reviews it after he watches it. Damn straight. Last little bit of news here. Um, Brian, talk to us about this new trailer that we saw and <laughs> uh, what, what your feelings were on it, buddy. Um. Mortal Kombat, if you were not aware, uh, they are making a new movie uh, for modern audiences. Uh, the first, I don't know if you guys liked the older ones. Um, the original one I thought was, like, at the time, the most amazing movie that I've ever seen. I liked the then original. Then I was, like, 10 years old, I think, I when like it came out. It's, so. You know, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Aubrey and I remember I it being, like, okay. But in term, I mean... Now like, I'm sure if I watch it, I'd be like, eh, that's kind of... This is terrible. <laughs> but you know what? I'm happy to hold on to those like childhood memories and be like, yes, Mortal Kombat. When the song comes on Mortal and Kombat. you're flying through the, the dragon symbol and the flames are shooting up. Like, yeah, super awesome. Second one, yeah, I don't I don't know what they were yeah, doing. It was, it was right. cheesy. Um, did they make a third one? I don't remember. Um, I don't then, yeah, they did. And did we they? just about to talk about the trailer. Well, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Well, they they rebooted it a little bit with like a web series or whatever those kind of more realistic uh, with jacks and stuff and and actually people kind of liked the look of that. I'm not sure if they liked the the actual content of it. Sorry, I just knocked something over. Um, but now we have an actual real movie that hopefully land. Well, no, it's on HBO, so it'll be in theaters and HBO Max at the same time. Doing, right? Uh, next month. Next month. Yeah, it's March. March of next month. I feel, um, so. And this trailer looks so good, and I want to watch this movie, and I don't care what Jason says. He's going to crap all over it and whatever. He shouldn't even have an opinion on this. Were you, were you <laughs> saying that as Jared? I feel like you were saying that as Jared. You making fun of Jared? Don't make fun of Jared. No. I, I, I'm, <laughs> if I sound sarcastic, I am sorry. It's just my resting sarcastic voice i do he does have a resting sarcastic voice <laughs> i was super hyped by this trailer i thought it looked really good um the only things that i could say that i don't like about it um perhaps the script is not all the way there uh there's a line i posted in our chat where they're like where the one girl's like hey uh it's a they're like what is that symbol he's got like the dragon symbol on him she's like oh it's a birthmark like what do you mean like, oh, he was born with it. Like, yes, that is what a birthmark. Like, it's just a dumb little exchange that I hope sounds better in the actual movie and they just cut it that way. But but the actual action, the actors that they have in this, uh, they have Hiroki Sonata, who is playing Scorpion, who is in a bunch of other movies that I love. Um, the martial arts feats on display in the trailer were cool. The special effects, for the most part, were good. There's a, a half-second shot of Goro that looks pretty CG, but I'm sure they will try to work on that a little bit more um, to clean that up. It certainly looks better than the rubber suit the, the that they had in the first movie. Sub-Zero and Scorpion are fighting, and I, I mentioned this before, and yeah, where he turned the, the blood, blood dagger <laughs> into, into a dagger was yeah. pretty fantastic. So, I don't know. Jason doesn't need to talk during this topic if he's going to crap all over it but jared no, I'm gonna, go I'm to you first <laughs> jared, let jared let's, talk, let's first. talk to jason let's okay talk to fine jason. now here, here's my thing this movie is exactly what it shows you so if you watch this that's what you're gonna get you're gonna get another kind of you know it's not gonna be <laughs> it may try to take itself serious 
but it's not really like a serious kind of movie. It's it's kind of owning the fact that this is over the top crazy. I will say that while yeah. like the character, the a- actors were acting very like super serious. Um, and I was a little bit worried that they were going to take themselves a little too seriously. The actual like combat and action in it is the over the top, like super bloody, gory, yeah, goofy Mortal Kombat I mean, stuff. The thing is, for me personally, like I think of a lot of these types of movies as okay, if if I personally had the ability to make a movie based off of a, a beloved franchise video game. I would want to make, you know, something that's in like a more like I don't want to say realistic because obviously there's nothing about Mortal Kombat that's going to be realistic. But like I'd rather have a more like serious tone, try to make an actual you know story. And I feel like this movie is the type that just does what most video games do and kind of just, you know, they they look for the bullet points on the side of the box and they just highlight them. I think you're wrong. There's a guy named Sub Zero, and he's got ice, and he's gonna stab. Somebody this has the involve. To my knowledge, this has the involvement of like the I hope creators of Mortal Kombat. Like I, I think you are. I'm, well, I mean, I'm sure they're involved with it, but I, I don't think they're writing the script for it. You know? So you saw the tra- like you you watched the trailer, right? Like you you actually looked at it with I did your watch eyes and, and pressed the play it. button. Okay. How many times? And you think they're just Once, hitting the bullet points? And didn't actually capture the essence of what Mortal Kombat Listen, is. Calm, calm down. Don't 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 attack me here. <laughs> or are you doing I'm, like I'm, a devil's I'm, advocate I'm thing, like, and then you're gonna reverse it and be like, "But this now, this is Mortal I'm Kombat." I'm just I'm just saying, like it. It just looks like I don't know. It seems just kind of generic. I don't know. I I want more out of it than just some guy screaming, "Finish him!" And, you know, Kano with his, you know, eye laser, you know, blowing yeah. somebody up. Like, the trailer is cut to be fan service. I will give you that. But I don't and, think and I'm I don't think in the movie they're going to cut that. to like everybody going, I'm Kung Lao. I'm Kano. Like they're not going to. And, and I'm worried they are. You think so? <laughs> like, they're going to have like a montage. Like, where, I, I, yeah. I feel like, yeah, like, I mean, I see a lot of what they're showing and it's like, I'm worried that. That's it's just gonna be like okay. that. Right. Anyway, I want Jared, Jared. So, so back to the tell the people of the I awesomeness for what it is. Tell I, the people of the is, awesomeness of Mortal Kombat. The trailer, and fantastic. I'm not gonna have to pay for it. So the trailer's fantastic. Um, I 100 percent agree with Brian. Yes, uh, I'm the only right take. Excited for it. Um, I I don't think that it's just gonna be this bullet point movie. And the beauty I, is, it's it's out in like two weeks, right? It is. Take. So three, like we'll be weeks. able three weeks, three weeks. So we'll we'll you know, it's on HBO Max. So a large number of people will be able to see this. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll do all right. I might it's, it's I might risk my life for this. Really? Uh, your, I'm, I'm your family. Is gonna, no, I'm like, <laughs> oh, to, oh, to me, my God. This, really? to me, this has for to be this? Seen it. Brian, really? Um, <laughs> are you that know. desperate for the theatrical experience? Of I mean, kind of. It's been a year. I think this is one that I want to see in the theater for sure. Yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, it, I'm still going to look at like how many people are in the show time and stuff like that. It's, and if it, is if I'm I can't find to one, watch but... on a PlayStation Vita screen about yay big. No, pretend I'm actually wow. playing a game. Christopher Nolan would hate you, right Jason. Now. Why are you turning into Brian right now? Seriously, bro, this is ridiculous. This is what? what? Bro, this is normally Brian's take on my it, it totally on my is. trailer. I am I am on the shocked that I love. Again. Brian is one that's usually like, uh, this is terrible and this is terrible. And here's Jason going, uh, this is terrible. And Brian's like, yes, Brian, we need more moments like this. We need more moments <laughs> well, like this. savor it we while it lasts. It just depends on the franchise, I suppose. Together, I guess. Uh, anyway, so we'll I'll see. You you know, I'm looking forward to watching it. I just hope it's it's I hope there's more to it than what I saw. There is. Calm I mean, down. That doesn't have to be. You it's calm Mortal down, Kombat. Jason. It's about people fighting and I doing cool moves. It doesn't have to be. I'm saying I want there to be. All right. I would imagine if you've seen the stories of the most recent games that the stories is probably going to be uh-huh. like that. The, I mean, from so I don't play the games because I'm not good at them at all. But I do pay attention to like people who play them and yeah. articles and different things. And people have said that that the latest uh, Mortal Kombat game has a fantastic storyline. Like it actually has a storyline that people enjoy. Um, it, and it's not just a, 
go to the it's, arena and fight thing. It, here's a side note to hype up the movie. Uh, I implore uh, one NDD20 to travel to his PlayStation 5 uh, PlayStation collection and notice that one it's of the free games yeah, let's is play Mortal it. Kombat, and it has a very enjoyable story mode that if he has not experienced, I think his his stream would enjoy and love. Take you to task, sir. Anyway, Jared, Andy, you Jared will be here there on the noodle minute. cast on the noodle cast calling out ndd20 uh okay next i mean let's move on no one would hear the call out so it's fine you're fine you're safe it's fine Andy. it's fine it's fine clip it's it somebody it <laughs> do i rate it what does that mean is that a is that a i don't understand brian that really enjoyed the story I anyway. watched other people play it. Yeah, I yeah. watched people play it. I didn't play it. I, I never had it until it was free on PS Plus right now. I mean, should I cut this part out? I mean, anyway, I'm just not a go. button masher. <laughs> I'm just not. I can't button yeah. mash. Well, I used to so. couch. The Mortal Kombat the games are the best couch. <laughs> couch. That's, uh, that's why you don't do it. And then it's not couch co-op, but like couch game playing games that I've I've had like with my buddies. Yeah. Just get on the couch or the futon or whatever. And have two controllers and just duke it out like we have some epic like all night long let's play and like we're not quitting until i beat you kind of thing if somebody goes on a run or whatever (laughs) like that that's the kind of thing and so i'm excited yeah yeah Yeah, it brings back memories for sure for sure yeah um okay let's move on to our movie reviews yeah so exciting we had two movies. I have no I idea one. what your movie is. <laughs> I saw one and Brian and Jason saw oh. one. We'll start with mine. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with mine. Did you My choose movie this? That I saw. Yep. Okay. The movie that I saw is, is rentable um, on different things. Um, and it is called Psycho Gorman. Psycho Gorman is the name of this movie pg psycho gorman yeah okay psycho gorman is <laughs> about two children uh their brother and sister who the sister is like crazy she's over the top she's um she's just crazy okay she's probably i want to say she's maybe 11 12 somewhere in that range brother's probably 14 13 somewhere in there and um they're playing this game at the beginning of the movie um that's this made-up game that they have um and as they as they play this game um that the rules are made up this the game reminded me of if you've ever seen um new girl where they have what's the name of that game on new girl that they play yeah game. i know, you what, know you're what i'm talking about, about? yeah where it's this long long really big list of rules and everything that's what this yeah. game was well the sister beats the brother and so because he lost um she said that that he was go- she was going to bury him alive um and so he had to dig his own hole and so he's digging this hole in the backyard and it's deep this hole's like four feet deep it's like six feet by five feet i mean it's this massive hole and um, he hits something, and as he hits it, he pulls it out, or they see it, and it's this glowing rock. And they end up, they manage to pry this gro- glowing rock out of out of the ground. And the ground starts, like, becoming pink, and they run and go inside, and the story continues from there. Well, what ends up coming out is this alien monster. Um who he has this long title he doesn't have a name he has this long title and um uh he's come to destroy the universe and destroy the world um he looks like a power rangers bad guy that's exactly what he looks like he looks exactly like a power (laughs) rangers bad guy uh he's purple um and oh yeah so he looks like uh what like the ooze guy or what's his name yeah Yeah. ivan ooze and so he find the kids find him um, he had wandered away from the house um, and he ended up killing these these guys. And th- so this movie is very gory, by the way. It's very, yeah. very gory movie. Very schlocky. Yeah. Okay. And like a trauma type or a little. It more... is like an 80s horror movie, like the 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 effects, the CGI, 
everything about this, I I, I take it it's more most of it is like realistic effects versus CGI effects. Like and so it's very cool. 80s, um, very 80s uh, type style movie. Anyway, we come to find out that this little girl has the stone. Whoever has the stone controls the universe or controls sight of this this monster. Mm-hmm. And so like she's like talking to him and he's like trying to get the stone from her and he's telling her how he's going to destroy her and eat her and and like he's going to dest- kill all of her family in front of her and she's like okay shut up and go sit down over there and he like uh, uh, he like bows his head and walks over and sits down on the thing and so they're they're trying to figure out a name and they come up with the name psycho gorman because he's psycho and he is really gory with his makes sense so they, so they went with psycho team. gorman could connect the dots on that one so this whole this whole movie is about this little girl who has the stone stone and she's crazy herself so like at one point she tells him she goes pg kill my brother for being so stupid and like the monster grabs her brother by the neck and like starts squeezing and she's like okay stop i was just kidding and mm-hmm. like like she's that psycho type mentality twist um Other aliens come to try to, because he's supposed to destroy the universe, other aliens come to try to, like, take him out. And it, this movie, I laughed so much in this movie because of the stupid antics that went, that took place. Let me just say, it's not a good movie. It's not really (laughs) a good movie. It's I mean, it's okay. It is if it, it's on. It sounds like it's on purpose. So I mean, that would put that's make exactly that, like what a, it is. That means yeah. it's like, a good movie. It does what it's no, trying by, to do. By, by not good, like uh, yeah, low yeah. production value. Point, it's very so, low. Production, it is meant yeah. to be like a cheesy, very terrible campy, mid middle like of the night Sharknado movie that shows on, on a budget this chiller TV girl, channel or whatever. I yeah. don't know who this actress is. I I um she's fantastic. She is really really good. And she does some of the the dump the the craziest things, and she gets him to dress like she gets Psycho Gorman to dress up in like these slacks, and he has like a a sweater over his shoulders, and it's tight in a knot, and like like very preppy looking, and it it's ridiculous movie. Um, it was seven dollars to rent, and I will say I thought it was worth the seven dollars a hundred percent. Um. If you get an opportunity to watch this movie, I would say watch it. Is it is this is this Judas and the Black Messiah? Not even close. <laughs> like it's not it's not it, this movie will win zero awards. It is not meant like it's not meant to be that thing. It's meant to be a take on those 80 um or or early 90s campy horror movies. Um uh, the the one that that I think of th- that's actually slightly better in CGI than this one is um, uh, Slither. If you ever saw the movie James Slither, Gunn. yeah, yes, um, very similar concept of these alien, this alien and the the creatures that it creates and everything. Um, I I enjoyed this movie. I really did. Um, it was entertaining. I laughed. I don't think Aubrey liked it all that much. I think she was okay with it. <laughs> I feel like you but gotta like, be in the mood. I think she, she had exactly, and she's like, I think she just thought it was a little weird. Um, but I, man, I really, I really, I, I was entertained. I was entertained by by Psycho Gorman. Um, okay. I would, I would recommend it. How about it's that? Just, and where was it available? It's just on. I got it on Apple TV. Um, seven dollars. I got to imagine it's available. It's for just on, on on demand. Prime or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any of the the on demand things that you have. Um, Psycho Gorman. It was it was about an hour and a half. It's not even that long of a movie. Hour forty minutes, maybe something like that. So not that long of a movie, but uh, it was it was entertaining. It was okay. entertaining. Very much to Brian's point. I, I, I sit here and think about it. The costuming was so. Um power ranger bad guy looks yeah. like every aspect of it there the other I just, aliens just the google images it. just it just looks like a power rangers episode yeah yeah um yeah I, aubrey she liked it it was really stupid but entertaining and that's pretty much the way you can describe it um it, it was ridiculous um i enjoyed it quite a bit so yeah psycho gorman uh check it out i would recommend it do it do it 
Uh, okay. Brian, Jason, uh, what did you guys see? Um, we saw the movie I Care A Lot on Netflix. Um, it's about a lady who cares a lot. Um, she's played by Rosamund Pike. Uh, Rosamund Pike very much in Gone Girl mode, like through this entire movie. Uh, if you've seen Gone Girl and know what she does in that movie, uh, I got major vibes of, of her uh, in this in this role here, too. Um, it also stars uh, Peter Dinklage and Isa Gonzalez, uh, if you're familiar with her as well. Um, and it is about um, Rosamund Pike's character is a a person who owns a company who um, who becomes the legal guardians of like elderly people um, who have no family or they can't take care of themselves or whatever um, gets them placed into uh, care homes and then sells all their assets uh, and tries to turn a profit. <laughs> um and a lot of the times she targets specific people um, that she knows like she can do this very easily uh, to without any repercussions and, and, and things like that. Um, and, and that's like her business. She has a whole wall of like their Polaroids um, that she keeps track of them on. Uh, and, she's, alive. It, and she's constantly like, just, like staring at the wall as she like thinks about her life, I guess. Um, and, and she's very much like a, she is a, very confident woman. She knows her way, uh, how to talk herself into and out of every situation. Um, she's very smart. She's very smart in the courtroom. Uh, she has a lot of, um, scenes in a courtroom where she's trying to defend her practices and like family members come in and be like, Hey, you put my mom in a home. And she's like, well, we have this proof for the doctor and yada, yada. So she's very well prepared. Um, and, and does what she does very well. Obviously it is terrible and she's a terrible person. Uh, for doing this, but um, she is our protagonist. Um, the antagonist, I guess, for for what it's worth, in in this movie is Peter Dinklage, who happens to be involved with a uh, her most recent client, I guess, or person that she puts acquisition that she puts in a home. <laughs> um, turns out this this lady who thought who she thought had no ties, um, and was the easiest like millions of dollars ever because of all the assets that she owned um has mob ties uh, and that's where peter dinklage comes in as a as a mob uh mob leader um and so ever from there it's very much like a, a cat and mouse trying to get each other trying to one-up each other and, and take out the revenge on on each other um throughout the entire movie um it's very much a there's very much uh, dark comedic aspects to this movie. Um, there is a um, it's it just kind of like a uh, it's not a movie that you can really sympathize with any of the main characters because obviously they're all terrible. Um, you have a, a mob leader who murders people and is a drug dealer and you have her who takes advantage of the elderly and you know puts them in these positions and, and sells off all their stuff. Um. And so from that standpoint, I could see why some people might not like it. And actually, if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes scores, critics like it. And for the most part, users don't. Um, I am one of the user review people who actually really enjoyed this movie. I thought Rosamund Pike was outstanding in this movie. Um, her character is at times infuriating and obviously very... Um, troubling to like try to like and root for in this movie and you really can't um but the, i mean there's some scenes in when you kind of do uh with the things that she's put through but she's also put other people through like terrible terrible things as well and you just kind of want to see her get her comeuppance uh at the end um peter dinklage is peter dinklage he's pretty good in basically everything that he does um it's a, a nice little spin for him i guess because um the way he plays this um this mobster, he's almost like a hipster guy. He's got like a top knot and the the scarf and he likes smoothies and he does yoga and like all that stuff. But then he would like order his dudes to kill someone and, you know, just very sort of um, mobbish. The opposite of what you would think, you know, he, he does. He's a modern mobster. Um, but yeah, and, and this movie also it like it. It's very much exaggerated on purpose because it is trying to show um you know, while this 
exact sort of scenario this taking advantage of these elderly people and selling off all their assets i don't know if this could happen in real life like it does uh, certainly not legally uh, the way that she's lying about it but i do know that there are things in out there right now where people things take it adva- people take advantage of other people like this not just like this this is obviously an exaggerated i, I don't know how exaggerated i suppose um example of this but this does happen and this is a this movie is sort of a commentary on uh, why our society allows this to continue to happen. And and we know that it happens, obviously, because you could probably think of, you know, any number of things that happen right now that, that takes advantage of people like this. Um, but I, I really like this movie. I didn't have any problem with the fact that there's no likable character in this, but if that sounds like a problem for you, then you might not enjoy it as much. But Jason, I'm curious to know what, uh, what your thoughts were on it. Yeah, this movie was uh, was uh, an interesting one. Uh, Roseman Pike's character Marla, the kind of uh, the main character, basically. Um, God, do you really hate this woman? Um, because she is just an evil person. Um, you know, they very early on set up like how she does her her thing, and you know, basically she just preys upon you know elderly people that are you know on the the edge of being able to defend themselves and you know she just finds enough information to get someone to say that yeah they're they're not you know to sway it from like yeah you know maybe they have a little bit of memory problem like they you know get forgetful like they're they're probably still good for like 10 more years but she'll she'll have it swayed to where it's like yeah no they need to be they need to be put in a facility and watch 24 7 they're a danger to themselves and basically the people are like hamstrung like they you know, they, they do these procedures without the person there in the court because it's like, well, you know, it's an emergency. This person's a danger. So we have this. They're never wit- witnessed, you know, the, and the judge is like, oh, but they have like bad. their primary there's care physician that, that signs off. off on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah, like, is it got the thing from the doctor? Yes, this is this is bad. And and she plays it off as the, you know, the champion. I'm here to, to protect these people. I want to make sure that they are safe. She and has a switch she can flip like at, at oh, an yeah. instant of going from like sweet and caring to, you know, just like, absolutely just, devious. You know, like it's like every movie where there's like a lawyer that's like they're so good at being a lawyer. And like you can tell like this person is evil, but like they they know the law and they are able to use it as a weapon and they use it as a weapon in a way to to like affect these, you know, poor victims and and basically like stuff them in a hole and take everything they've owned yeah um even if they have family and like so it's like you really hate this or mob ties like yeah and then you know and this the, the setup for this movie is she she finally comes across somebody that she probably shouldn't have done this to mm-hmm. and you know she thought it was going to be an easy mark and it it develops into this like oh yeah this this did not go as planned um, and you see the the back and forth between the the factions, as it were. Yeah. Um, it was a really fun movie. Um, I think Peter Dinklage did a good job. I like his his character. He's this kind of like, I don't know. I, he's not quite Tyrion-ish. You know, he's not as quippy as that. But like, he's definitely got like the. He's more soft spoken. I would I would say, but he's, then he's threatening he feels when like he a, needs to be like a boss, yeah. like in, in the times of like decision-making, like he's very kind of like direct and, you know, he, he knows, he knows he's powerful and he knows what he's capable of. Uh, but he's also a very angry man. Yeah. And when things don't go his way, he lets people know it. Um, but uh, I think he, he played it well. Um, and just like some of the other characters, the, the, the lawyer and, and whatnot, I, I, I I really enjoyed the characters uh, as much as I hated some of them because they're just they they play their characters well you know yeah. they're they're not likable people you know it's it's you know if you were doing a story on you know rival gangs that are murdering people that are innocent you know you don't like either of them yeah. you know like they're they're all bad um, but the movie was was really entertaining um, you know I I really was rooting against her for a lot of the movie just because like. Mm-hmm. I can appreciate a gangster, I guess. Like just, just you know, they're they're trying to steal stuff. I mean, and maybe somebody gets shot, but this person that is was like, like secondary to what was going on. It's in almost the movie. like yeah. what she's doing is so effed up <laughs> that it's like somehow worse. 
than just shooting somebody, you know, yeah. or or whatever. Uh, so yeah, this was a cool movie. I I, I enjoyed it. Um, and uh, you know, Netflix, right? It, it is, is Netflix. Netflix movie, yep. So you know, it's definitely one worth checking out. Um, you know, it's got good production value too. It's it's a know, slickly well uh, edited movie. Yeah. Yeah, it is uh, overall. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, interesting back and forth, and and uh, you know the setup of of how it all happens. It's it's an intriguing thing and kind of thought provoking because you wonder, like Brian said, I don't know if stuff like this happens to this degree. Where, but stuff like you know, this you, happens. You have <laughs> you have somebody that's created a business around this with you know a team of people, um, but. I I feel like this definitely happens where there are people that will take advantage of their position to uh, to take advantage of people and strip them of whatever they have. Some of them who are, you know, perfectly fine to to live off, you know, on their own for at least a while longer. So yeah. it's yeah, you know, it kind of makes you a little sad in that respect. That like, uh, you know, it's a horrible fate for the people that that do get tied up in this kind of thing. Interesting. This uh, the director for this directed the Fifth Wave, um, which was not a great movie, um, but it's definitely not in the same. They're not in the same realm. Yeah, that's like different. Disaster, alien invasion. Yeah, yeah, they're different, different movies. Yeah, but uh, interesting, interesting. Well, good. So, so we're uh, thumbs up for this one, huh? We're we're good to go. I really one. enjoyed this one. Yeah, yeah. Good. I would say it's worth checking out. Good. Good. All right. Well, kids, that's that's our show for today. Real nice, quaint, short show. We're here, you know, just to uh, bring the basics to you. Um, we appreciate everybody being here. We had two subs today, which was fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, and, uh, you know, we're everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook. I don't remember if I missed any of those. Anyway. Um, I don't know how you do that every time. I Well, I mess it up every time. So, uh, But, you know, we appreciate it. And go find us on those things to, you know, go see us and, and whatnot. Find us on the socials. Brian does a, a heck of a job on YouTube, so go check those out. Um, our little YouTube reviews and whatnot, in case you miss any. Uh, we'll be back next week. Another episode of the Noodle Cast. Uh, and we look forward to it. We look forward to seeing you here with us. It's exciting. Anyway, peace out. Be good. Have fun. We'll see you next week.